Now, for many Africans living in the diaspora, and that includes me, of course, going back home is always full of surprises. Some pleasant, others not so pleasant. The continent is changing at a rapid rate that it is so difficult to keep up with if uh, you are not there to experience it firsthand. This is certainly the case with E.K. He's the protagonist of a new novel titled Foreign Goods, Inc. Well, I'm glad to say the author of Foreign Gods, Inc., rather, it joins me now in the studio, OK, in Dibe. Thank you very much for joining us. Let's start with you reading a, a, a passage from your book. Uh, thank you, Peter. Um, darkness dominated a starless sky. The generator in the house next door had fallen silent, leaving the house in pitch darkness. He felt wrapped by this endless dark fabric, fabric it was the kind of night he was no longer accustomed to, resident in a city of scintillating light. Frogs, crickets, and other nocturnal, nocturnal denizens filled the air with their steady din. A goat bleated in sleepy stupor. He heard the faint swell of drums floating in from a far uncertain distance. Fantastic stuff. I mean, I've introduced the book as, you know, the tale of, a, of, a, of uh, an African in diaspora going back home, but it, it is more than that, isn't it? It is a lot more than that. Uh, the novel is actually um, examines the way that we consume one another's illusions. And so my protagonist returns to Nigeria um, to steal the deity of what used to be the god of war for his people in order to sell it to a gallery in New York City. Um, and when he's in Nigeria, he finds that there is a great uh, fascination by Nigerians in consuming American cuisine and ideas that they believe are American. So there is um, that kind of consumption of one another, another's illusion. He's also shocked by the level of development he comes back to meet as well, because, you know, he's left, uh, when he left, there were thatched houses, but he's seen corrugated roofs, big mansions being built and um, all that. Indeed. Is, is that, is that a bit of what you've been through? I mean, you've been in the States since about 1988 or something. Is I've that been what in you, the States you find each time you go back? Yes. Every time one returns to Nigeria, there is a sense that the place is constantly changing. Um, so I remember the first time that, um, you know, I went to Nigeria and I saw that everybody had cell phones, for example. Um, so it, constantly when you go to Nigeria, um, you find that there's this rapid pace of change. And that's part of what the protagonist, uh, who's been in America for some, for some time, uh, witnesses once he returns home. Now, I mean, I've got to bring in the fact that you're also a social commentator uh, about... Nigeria, obviously. You've just heard about uh, your country, Nigeria, being named as one of the mint countries. Do you get a sense that, yes, Nigeria is moving to that level of becoming an economic powerhouse? Nigeria is a paradox. Nigerians are one of the most educated people in the world. There's a lot of energy and industry in the country. Unfortunately, on the government side, we've been very unlucky. And so because Nigeria has had uh, very uh, poor leaders, the country has uh, constantly fallen into the trap, which Chino Achebe talked about, which is that we snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. And so I hope that this time around we'll be able to make it happen. Okay. But I have, I have my doubts. I wish we could go on for a bit more, but we're, time is against us. Thank you.